Hi. Have you ever wondered how to win the swinging position? Uh, the reason I decided to make this video, uh, apparently this position is very hard for a lot of people, including uh, grandmasters. I just today watched the video by Jan Gustafsson, uh, annotating uh, game Caruana Swidler, which inspired me actually for this video from two years ago when they played candidates matches and Caruana didn't win this one um, so uh, and he said it's extremely difficult uh, it is indeed I remember the first time I started analyzing this position with our engine without uh, any table basis because I believe this is the best way to learn anything try to solve it yourself rather than just read because you forget it but if you come up with the solution yourself it will stay with you for a longer time so um, I encourage you to analyze this position, try to find a win over the board, but I spent quite some time and still in one line I didn't see one critical move, I'll show you which one was it, and so I couldn't see the win in the whole line, so I was abandoning it. So uh, I hope I can help you understand and feel this position better, and hopefully my explanations would help you uh, find a win uh, in extreme conditions, usually that would be like many hours of the game and tired and everything. But uh, with the understanding of principles, even if we switch colors, we reverse the board to 90 degrees uh, to the side. Uh, like Swidler confessed that when he was playing Caruana, their position was 90 degrees to the left. So uh, Black's king was on a4 and White's king was on, uh, was on c4. So, uh, and he couldn't understand that he was studying position like this, I think so. So, but if you understand the ideas, the ideas are transferable. You don't need to remember exact moves. You remember the idea and you execute it. So, this is a winning position for white, but the win is not at all trivial. So, what is happening? If rook a8 check, it's rook d8, right? Black can hold it. Uh, what you must remember, uh, if the rook goes to that side, this is the only way to hold it. Um, so rook can go to the left and to the right without any, any problems. White can never leave the seventh rank. Uh, well, can, but it's not recommended. For example, if the second you leave it, black does this. And now check is coming. And bishop d6 doesn't help immediately, it's a draw. So, and actually white would have to give check and come back here and black has to, to, to go down again to be able to hold from the queen's king side as well. So uh, one more thing you must remember that when you are defending this is the best place for your rook. Uh, well assuming the bishop is here basically the same color of the bishop right if you reverse the position if you change the color and everything the best place for the rook is of the color of the bishop because uh, all the squares from which the rook can um, hide the king are uh, white squares. Uh, well, it's still easy, hard to understand why, but hopefully you will. This is the best place for a rook. So what you must remember when you are attacking, you should make a waiting move so that the rook moves away from the, in this case, a second rank from the best place. If you make a waiting move rook to b7, Black has only two moves. It's rook here, or rook d3 or rook d1. King cannot move for obvious reasons. Mate in one or two, right? And rook can never go to d8 because rook goes to other side. So this is trivial. You can give back the move to your opponent. Now, the best move is rook d1 for black. But in order to understand what is going on after rook d1, let's consider rook d3. So this is actually the worst place for the rook. It is way too close to the king and the problem is this bishop is already controlling these squares so the rook will not be able to help the king. And secondly, this square, actually these squares are important. They are of dark, of dark color. So if the bishop somehow moves to d4 and will be protected, that would be it. The rook cannot give check and this is the worst place for the rook. But how to use it? So um, for myself, I remember that if the rook is in the worst place, so this is the best on d2. Second best is d1. This is the worst of these three squares. If the rook is at the worst place, you give a check on e7. You give a straightforward check to the king. Now black has two moves. King d8 is correct. King f8 loses instantly after rook h7. And this is why this is the worst place for the rook. 
because there's no rook g3 move that could save. And that's it, mate comes very quickly. So after rook e7, opponent has only moved king d8. Now uh, you move the rook to the... If you move the rook back to b7, he comes back to e8. We didn't accomplish anything, right? So you have to go to h7. Again, mate is coming. Again, black has only one move to save from the mate. The bishop is controlling this, so mate is coming. King c8 is the only move. Now it almost escaped. But we give him a check from c7. And he cannot escape because of discovered check and the rook is being lost, right? So we put the king back to the cage on d8. But what has changed? First of all, king on d8 is poorly placed. It's better placed on e8. And secondly, this is the key idea that it's repeating itself for, for, uh, in two different lines. The reason why this rook is so poorly placed, one reason we already saw, it's bishop g3 controlling this square. But the main reason is this square is dark. And if the bishop moves here being protected, this rook cannot give check and mate will follow. So here is basically one move you have to remember. Rook to c4. It threatens checkmate immediately, right? Black has two moves to, uh, to save the game. It's king e8 or rook e3. Rook e3 loses for the same reason. The bishop controls these squares. And after, for example, rook to b4, rook b8 is inevitable. Because again, this is the worst place for the rook. If it was on e2, it would go to c2. If it was on e1, it would go to c1. And we would be back to square one. If not already a draw. But rook on e3 cannot reach c3, that's it, immediate mate. So rook e3 doesn't help, king e8. So what has changed? Our rook, this rook is still here, the king is still here, our rook was on b7, why is it better on c4 than on b7? Hopefully you already understood why, because of just one move, just one move and black resigns and it is bishop to d4. Take a look at this position. Complete domination of white pieces, mate in one is coming, Rook is helpless. Again, if the rook was here, there would be check. If the rook was here, there would be check, right? And king alone cannot save himself. King d8, it's bishop f6 check. Or, or actually bishop b6, doesn't matter. And rook c8. So, again, let's say from the beginning, it's not the, the whole explanation. It's about rook d3. So, best place for the rook is of the color of the bishop. Because all these squares are white, and that is of the opposite color, which is good for the defensive side. So we have to get rid of that square. We, we give the move to your opponent. And if he goes to the worst square, rook d3, so these two best square, d1 second best, this is the worst one. And then you give check to the king in front of his face. King d8 only move. You go to the h7. It seems that he's escaping from the cage. You give him another check. He goes back to the cage. Basically, what you need to remember that you, from this position, you need to get your rook to c4. That's what you need to remember. And then play bishop d4. That's the idea. How to execute it? Start with a check. And then it's more or less automatic. Rook h7, king c8, rook c7, king d8, and rook c4. And it's actually made in a few moves. That's it. Bishop f6 is coming. And king e8, bishop to d4, controlling the critical, critical square. That's why this is the worst place for the rook. The bishop was controlling that square and c3. The rook cannot give a check or help the king. That is it. All right. So, as like in mathematical theorem, we proved one part of a theorem. How to win when the rook is on d3. How to win with rook on d3. With rook on d2 you cannot win. You have to make a waiting move. Then rook has to go to, uh, to an uh, inferior square. If it goes to d3, hopefully you remember these ideas. Bishop to d4, controlling this square. And rook should appear to c4 by means of giving check first. Relatively straightforward variation. So, but what to do with rook d1? Here it's where is the part is, is the most trickier. Similar position happened in the game Caruana Swidler 2016, game uh, round 13, uh, candidate matches. By the way, Caruana were supposed to win that game. From this position, if he was played all the accurate moves, by the way, you can find that game annotated in the chess, in the megabase. If Caruana uh, 
did all the best moves without hesitation, deliberation or wasting time, he would give checkmate on move 50. 50 move rule, they had this position for 30 something moves until reaching the winning position. Fabi would win this with the move 50. Black wouldn't have time to write down move 50. That would be mate on the board or a rook would be gone. So that's why I think it is very important to know exactly what is the fastest way to win from this position. So what to do with rook to d1. Now it becomes trickier. Remember with rook on d3, rook on c4 was so well placed. Why rook on c4 was so well placed? First of all, it supported bishop to d4. And secondly, not least important, was that it keeps the king in the cage, right? Standing diagonally from the king, it keeps the king in the, in the cage, so bishop f6 is a mate idea. From b4, a4, that's not the case. That's why this square is so important on c4. Something very similar is happening if black goes rook d1. That for the same reason, this square, specifically the g file, is important. It's actually, if you didn't study it, it's illogical to play rook g7 here. Normally, you want to go as far away from the king. But no, this is the best place for the rook because it keeps this king in the cage. If he approaches, he's still in the cage. I can go down the g-file. For example, now black has two moves, rook f1 and king f8. King f8 loses almost instantly. Rook goes down the g-file. That's why you choose the g-file. You keep the king in the cage as well as with the c-file. Actually, you can do that from the opposite side. No difference. But I like to, to do it from the shorter side just in case. Rook g2, mate is coming. What should black do? Only move is rook e1. The only move that can save is rook e1. And then why does this uh, nice idea? So now rook, rook is misplaced. It should be on f1. And now white goes rook a2, threatening checkmate. The rook is helpless in this situation. The king is alone. And now with rook h2, rook h8 comes with the mate. Right? So the only psychological reason not to go rook g7 is King f8 is attacking my rook, but king f8 really helps. After rook g2, that's it. King is still in the cage. Rook e1 only move. You go to one side and then you come back to h2. If you go to h2 here, technically it's also winning. It's rook g1, rook g1, uh, and now we go to another side. King goes here. We give check. King goes here. This is not the best way for white. And check. And now after king g6, king, rook, uh, rook is being lost. But I don't like this one because on the left side of the board, after rook h8, if we um, reverse the position to the left, the king would run to the, uh, if the king was on b7, right, and rook 1 was on b1, uh, on c1, sorry, on c1. After rook b8 check, king would go to a6. That's why I don't like this winning method, because I want to, just in case I want to use the short side, but better avoid it. So, uh, the, so more, more technical is rook a2, king goes there, and rook h2. And this winning method would also work if the rooks were placed like this. So we are not really using the short side. So, rook g7. So actually, this is another key idea. With rook on d3, we use c file. With rook on uh, d1, we use the g file. Rook g7, rook f1 only move. And now the, the winning move is bishop to g3. At some moment, you have to retreat the bishop. Just like with rook on d3, it was bishop d4 controlling e3. The same applies now. Bishop controls the e1 square. So, but it seems like what is the threat? There is no threat. The problem is it's black to move. Black can only play king f8 or rook f3. That's it. No more other moves. Uh, otherwise, mate on g8 is coming. Right? So let's see what happens if black goes king f8 with a tempo, right? Now, again, just like with rook on d3, where would you move the rook? You have to move it down the g-file to keep the king in the cage. So rook goes to g4, threatening, mate, and the bishop is again controlling this one. That's why the square on f1 is bad. Mate is coming from d6. Rook is helpless here, so king e8 is the only move. And now this is the position when I was analyzing my first time. I, could, I couldn't find a win here. I feel that there's a win. The king is in the cage. There's no checks. How do I do that? Now it's the, the trickiest part. 
Rook goes to a4, or b4, doesn't matter. Again, mate is coming. Uh, king f, there are two moves again, rook d1 and king f8. King f8 loses uh, to similar uh, scenario, it's bishop e5. And we've seen this idea, as, so rook is helpless. King g8, rook h4. King g8, rook h4, rook is helpless. This is coming, so king f8 doesn't work. It's rook d1, and in this position I couldn't find a move. Like, what do I do? What do I do? Actually, it's just one move. It is just one move that I missed. It's brilliant. So what is the problem? I gave check, it's rook d8. And I still need to control e1 square. This is the move. Bingo. Bishop h4. I still control this, and I attack that, and mate is coming. Now the only move is king f8. And now the most brilliant, uh, the fastest way to win, I found it, uh, the, not the best one when I analyzed first. The best move, again, the same idea, rook to g4. This is beautiful domination. Rook is keeping the king in the cage. There's no check on e1, and bishop e7 is irrefutable. That's it. Mate in a few moves is coming. So... Let me come back to a critical moment. So if rook is on f1, we always use the g-file. And now bishop g3. If king goes to f8, rook to g4, just like in... Uh, so this is a good setup of pieces, like this. And if king e8, rook goes to that, to a-file, rook d1, and now bishop to h4. This is a move I, I forgot that is winning. It's hard, but you'll get there if you move the pieces around on the chessboard. There's one more defense that is missing. In this position, it's a Tsukswan. We consider king f8, it loses to rook g4 with, uh, with a threat bishop d6. But rook f3, there's a waiting move rook f3. But we already know that this is a really bad place for the rook. And that's why I started with rook d3. The same winning method is this rook from f3. Now we come back to original position. If bishop is on e5, we know what to do. We give check on e7. But how do we get the bishop to e5? We need to get it with a tempo. How do we do that? We go bishop d6 first, threatening mate. The only move is rook e3. Now we come back to e5. The only move is rook f3. And we discussed this position, but the rook was on d3. But the win is uh, exactly the same. Rook e7 uh, check. And uh, you can check another line how to... King d8 loses immediately to rook b7. That's it. No, again, bishop is controlling this one. So it's king f8, rook a7, opposite side, king g8, rook g7 check, king h8 loses the rook, king f8. And again, this crucial square, rook to g4, mate is coming. And if king e8, bishop f4, mate is coming. That's why this is the worst place for the rook. All right. So, small summary of this situation. Best place when defending for the rook is on the color of the bishop. If you're attacking, give up the move. If rook goes to d3, this is the worst place. You should remember this rook to c4, bishop to d4 idea. But bottom line is we use C file and G file for a win. Actually, you can choose any. How to do that? You give check in front of the king if the rook is on D3. If the rook is on D1, maybe it makes sense to go to the shorter side just in case. Rook G7, Rook F1. And now you do this Bishop G3 move backwards. And then keep in mind Bishop H4 idea. So the main defense goes like this. Rook G4. King e8, rook a4, king rook d1, and bishop h4 was the move I forgot when I was analyzing. All right, I hope I cleared at least something for you guys today. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope if it happens over the board, your chances... Don't think that you would remember all of this. That's very hard. You have to repeat it, revise it, understand it deeper but your chances are now higher. All right. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.